Alright guys, lesson 55 is all about keys, but just a little bit of stuff that I still have to show you. First of all, if you have a square, you've always been told that you can get rid of the square by square rooting. Important in that case, if you square root both sides, you're going to have a plus minus in front. That means you've got two separate solutions. Sin equal to cos and sin equal to negative cos. Then we've got our type that the angles are the same, sin and cos, but angles are the same, so we divide by cos and we get back to tan. So that's how your sum will continue. Another alternative for that is if you have factorized sin square minus cos square is the difference of squares. So we factorize by saying sin minus cos, sin plus cos. But the same thing will happen, we'll have sin equal to cos and sin equal to minus cos, and then we can still go on and you're going to divide by cos and get to a general solution. So this is just showing you some nitty gritties that can happen. The second thing, so when I've got a square, I will square root, and when I do square root, the answer will be plus and minus. And if the answer is plus and minus, and I get to my reference angle, my quadrants that I'm going to be busy with, is all four quadrants. That means you just go and you write quadrant 1, quadrant 2, 3 and 4. There's lots of variations in this, but don't get cute with yourself. Just write quadrant 1, reference angle is 30, plus k 362, 180 minus 30 plus k 360, 180 plus 360 minus. Something else that can happen is if there's a minus in front of our type 3 sums, where you've got the angles that are different. Now a negative angle and a negative ratio, we learned about that in our negative angle reduction formulas. If there's a negative angle, the angle becomes positive but the ratio becomes negative, but not in the case of the cos. So we can say that if I've got minus and I can put this, the negative at the angle, reverse. If I've got minus and I can put the tan at the minus, but I cannot do that with cos because if it's negative in front, it's not the same as cos negative angle. Because the negative angle becomes a positive, but the cos will stay plus. So this is not true. That's why I'm taking in this case, I'll take the negative to the other side, divide both sides by negative. Then I can put the minus in front of the sin by the angle. So when I've got it at the angle, I can go to my type that says the angles are different. So make them both cos. How do we make them both cos? We use co-functions. So for co-functions, we need to write 90 minus the angle. 90 minus the angle becomes a plus. Then we've got our type um, 2 sums, with, or 2, 3 sums, where the cos and the causes are the same. We make a logical deduction, 90 plus equal to 2x, but plus minus in front and plus k360, and we solve, solve our sum, uh, solution. Another one is when you've got cos square, you, you think it's a type 4 sum, but that's a problem to me. When you've got cos square, you can always substitute it with 1 minus sin square, or 1 substituted with sin square plus cos square, which will then bring me to a quadratic equation where I can now factorize and do type 4. So there is always the solution that you can change a cos square into 1 minus sin square, or 1 equal to sin square plus cos square. Lastly, if you factorized and your answer gets to something like this, now remember, if you will shift sin this, it's going to give you an error because your sin graph has a maximum of 1, not 2. That's why you'll get no solution. I just wanted to mention that to you that inside of these sums, you can sometimes also have no solution. That is the end of the case for this term.